So today I've been turning this uh, open woodland that's chock full of ligustrum, this invasive privet, commonly used in hedges. And it seeds like crazy, it's invasive as hell, uh, doesn't feed any caterpillars, which don't feed any birds in turn, because uh, the baby birds only eat caterpillars. So I'm clearing this absolute thicket of uh, this crappy privet. And underneath we're going to get all sorts of fun species, like the rubus. The, the, the dewberry, you know, little white flowers in June. We're gonna have golden rods. There's white wood aster. Those little dusty guys. I'll show you. White wood aster. Those golden rods. This is more white wood aster. Let's see if we can find the golden rod. Well, the golden rods are more over here in this kind of open spot. Uh, there's also little maple leaf viburnums and arrowwood viburnums coming up. This is the golden rod section. Uh, you can't really see them anymore because the invasive bullcrap has taken over. There's also multiflora rose. This is the golden rod, yellow flowers in fall. Uh, it's just a mixture of invasive multiflora rose, invasive Lonicera japonica, or the Japanese honeysuckle, and uh, the crappy privet. So I've been clearing this out. This is going to be a nice meadow in the future. Uh, this is all going to be kind of partial shade meadow. And uh, we all we got you know various of uh, sedges and grasses and whatnot, but clearing out this woody stuff will help open up more light to the understory as we slowly improve this woodland. Here's the arrowwood viburnum or maple leaf viburnum I was talking about. So these little shrubs will dot here and there. Uh, they're distinct, so I can kind of tell between like a privet. And so I could run and run through here with like a. Uh, industrial sized uh, brush cutter and I won't see these little guys. I'll chop these. I'll chop the American hollies that are here and there. I mean I've already chopped a few of them but leaving the ones I can. Here they are. And so uh, making it more native. Uh, c cutting down the invasive stuff because I mean I could dig out every single one of these but if I just chop it every year uh, eventually the herbaceous stuff will take over. Because these privets are about three or four years old. And, uh, you know, if you keep them low, the abrasious stuff will grow above them. And eventually they'll die because they don't get enough sun. Or at least they will not come back as strong. Uh, things that will be a long-term kind of menace to deal with would be things like uh, the Lonicera japonica. That, uh, this Japanese honeysuckle. This stuff tends to survive and kind of hold on in these types of areas, so... It might just be manual pulling or just dealing with it. Because um, at least we'll have more whitewood aster. And whitewood aster, or the Yerbia diveritica, can compete with the Lonicera japonica. Same with the goldenrod. But they can't compete with that mixed with this ligustrum. Because you can see this ligustrum is about three, four feet tall. And what that does, it just uh, shades out the understory and lets nothing grow. Uh, that's why patches of, of these are pretty much empty of whitewood asters. You can see them. They're all over there. That, those kind of little dusty dudes over yonder. These little tufts. That's all whitewood aster. And I'd like to see this entire understory filled with whitewood aster, which blooms in uh, fall, like August, September, and October. And uh, you'll have golden rods, and eventually it'd be nice to get more spring blooming things in here. And having the whitewood aster and other natives uh, provides better forage for deer. Because the deer, they don't mess with the privet. Uh, they don't mess with the lonicera. They don't mess with the multiflora rose. So when we have more natives in here, it'll take pressure off the other native plantings. Along here, we have all sorts of cool native plants. It's like a uh, sunny meadow. Um, there's bergamot. There's goldenrod. Uh, there's joe pie. Um, there's different mints. There's... There's Coreopsis, and so hopefully some of that will start to spread throughout here. No, it'll be very nice. I'm looking forward to it. But this is, uh, you know, the first phase, you know, getting rid of the invasives. And as I take care of it, I'm going to come back and, you know, pull stuff here and there. Like if there's mugwort coming up, I'll go and pull that. If there's Lanacera, I see, I just go pull it out, get it. But I've just been chipping away at it with my hedge trimmer. That thing's amazing. It still has three battery. I've been using it hard for the last hour and a half. Um, I used the. Uh, I should have just been using that all day. That thing's friggin' awesome. I used uh, Ryobi. The Ryobi has. Don't buy the Ryobi extension. It's garbage. It 
the tooth break. And by tooths, I mean these. Like this one hasn't gotten stuck on me, whereas uh, the Extendo one on my Ryobi just constantly, like, this thing broke. It was, it was garbage. And then uh, I kind of weed whacked over there, and that was, it's mo it's different than this. This is woody. That was more bracious, and uh, you got to kind of dice it up. And eventually I'll rake a lot of that just out into here, put some seeds out here, so more sun hits there, so the plants come up better. Always a work in progress, though.